Dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel Remedial Classes. Please do like, share and subscribe. Today I have come up with a poem La Belle Dame Sans Mercy by John Keats. He was born in the year 1795 and died at 1821 at a very young age of 24 years. He was born into the family of a stable keeper. He started his career as a surgeon but he gave up and took to writing. He was a romantic poet. Romantic period roughly begins from 1798 and ends with the accession of Queen Victoria in 1837. Romantic writer valued imagination, power of thoughts, nature and they escaped from the real world through the use of imagination because they felt the present world full of fever, sufferings and pain. And romantic poets uh, in their writing we see supernatural elements and mysticism. And here is the one I am presenting before you. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Here, the poet is asking to the knight, Who is a knight? A knight is a warrior, and in social hierarchy, he stands at the top position. So, here, the poet is asking to the knight that what had made you so sad? Why are you loitering? Loitering means why are you roaming here and there? The sedge. It is actually a type of plant which grows in the lake but it has dried up and no birds sing. No birds sing because it is very cold winter. That is why no birds are singing. Here the poet is connecting nature with the thought of the night. As the night is very sad, the nature is also presented here in a very gloomy stage. The night does not respond at all. So the poet again asks him. Oh, what can ail the night at dawn, so haggard and so woe begone, the squirrel's granary is full and the harvest season is done. That means the poet is asking to the night that why are you so haggard and woe begone? Haggard means why are you so exhausted? Why are you so why are you looking so tired and woe begone? Means why are you so sad? The squirrel's granary is full. Squirrel is a type of a small animal and its grain, its granary is full means its grain is full. He has kept storage of uh, his food and harvest is also done. That means harvest season, the cutting of the paddies are also done. But why are you so sad? The knight does not respond at all. So the poet again asks the knight. I see a lily on thy brow with anguish moist and fever dew and on thy cheeks a fading rose fast withereth too. That means here the uh, poet is uh, telling to the knight that in your forehead I see a lily like flower. Lily is a flower which is always connected with uh, fever and paleness. So the knight's forehead is totally pale like a lily flower and it is wet with the sweat of fever. It is moist means it is wet and the cheeks which were which were like rosy it is withering means it is fading away and your cheeks are also looking so white and pale what had happened to you knight the poet asks then the knight finally responds and he says that i met a lady in the midst full beautiful a fairish child her hair was long her foot was light and her eyes were wild the knight is saying that I met a lady in the midst. Midst means meadow. Meadow is a grassy area. I met a lady in the grassy area. She had, she was extremely beautiful like a fairy. She had a long hair and her foot was light and uh, the way she was walking, it was not like a walking but it was as if she was flying. Her foot was so light and she had a very big, big wild eyes. In this way the knight was responding then again the knight is saying in the next stanza I made a garland for her head and bracelets too and fragrant zone she looked at me as she did love and made sweet moan here the knight is saying that he had made a garland for her head means crown for her head and bracelets to wear for her wrist and a belt for her waist with flowers and the lady was also looking at him and showing that she was loving him. In this way, she was expressing her love. 
I set her on my pacing stick and nothing else so all day long. For side long would she bend and sing a fairy song. Then the knight is saying that I made her sit on my horseback and whole day both of us rode together. I saw nothing else as I am totally enraptured by her beauty. I saw her and her and she also sang fairy song and both of us had a very beautiful private moment for that day. She found me roots of really sweet and honey wild and manadu and sure in language strains she said I love thee true. And in return of the gifts which the knight had given to her, the flowers, band, wrist and uh, fragrance zone, she gave her sweet roots of a particular plant which was very tasty to eat. And also she gave him manna dew. Manna dew means a dish from heaven which is very sweet. It is cited from the Bible. It is a biblical reference. For sidelong long uh, and she's uh, sorry and she uh, sang in a struck in a strange language that she loved him she took me to her elfin grot and there she wept and sighed full sore and there i shied her wild wild eyes with kisses for then the lady took him to her elfin grot elfin grot means a fairy cave and there the poet uh, sorry and there the knight uh, shut her wild eyes with kisses for and after that what happens in the next stanza and there she lulled me asleep and there I dreamt a woe betide the latest dream I ever dreamt on the cold hillside and there this lady lulled him to sleep and then there he saw a peculiar dream the latest dream he had ever seen what he sees I see Pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale where they all, they cried. La belle dame sans mercy had thee in thrall. In his dream, he saw pale kings, warriors and princes. They were also enraptured by her beauty. And these all peoples were uh, thrown by the lady. She deceived him and they were uh, warning to the knight that the knight lady had deceived you too. I saw their starved leaves in the gloom with horrid warning gaped wide and I woke and found me here on the cold hillside. And he saw the starved leaves of all these knights, warriors and kings. They were starving and their leaves were totally dried and they were gaping wide with wide my They were warning that she had deceived you too. And as soon as he woke up, what he sees? That he was on the cold hillside. And this is why I sojourn here alone and palely loitering, though the sage is withered from the lake and no birds sing. And this is why the knight is saying that he is loitering alone on the cold hillside. Loitering means moving around in search of the lady. But the lady is nowhere. She had vanished. And he is left alone. And since then, he is very pale and haggard and very sad. So, th this is the end of this poem. Now I would like to discuss a bit on the rhyme scheme of the poem. What is a rhyme scheme? We should know. Now in the first line we see, Oh what can ail the knight at arms? The first line should always be considered as A. And then in the second line we see, Alone and palely loitering. You see arms and loitering not matching, so we would consider it as B. And the third line, the sedge has withered from the lake. Is it matching arms, loitering, lake? Nothing is matching. So we will take it as C. And the next line, and no birds sing. You see now, sing and loitering is a bit matching. ING, ING is there. So we will take it as B. So what is the rhyme scheme of the poem? A, B, C, B. And the poem is also written in quatrains. Quatrains means four lines four lines makes one stanza and it is a 48 lines poem okay so i think this much is uh, this much is sufficient for you so please do like and share and please keep on watching my videos i will be continuously uploading